Hello everyone, I'm Hex Diazel. I love writing, just can't get enough of it. Love it, it's my happy place. It's the thing I like to do with my time and it's the thing that makes me the most happy in the whole world. But this last weekend, I had a proper sticking point, right? And I just, it caused me anxiety. And the thing I love to do, which is writing, was actually the source of a lot of stress for me. And I need to sort that out. And I did, and I wanted to share with you how I did it. Now, I don't believe in writer's block personally. For me personally, writer's block is never a thing. I've got stacks of ideas. I've got more ideas than I do time. And I I don't ever feel like I'm creatively dry or the juices won't flow. There's a sentence. I usually just go for it, right? And it's fine. My method of writing usually is to have an idea, then open up Notion, flesh out my characters um, so I know them really well and then put them in the world I've got planned and let the story unfold, knowing roughly where it's going to go. Now, the beats on the way tend to fill themselves in as I discover my own writing, as I'm as I'm adventuring through the writing. And then if I get to a sticking point where I'm like, oh, this is not really flowing right, I'll just go back and do a reread from where, up to where I am and I'll edit and I'll tweak. And then sometimes I go, oh, that, that bit doesn't make sense. or And then I'll go, oh, okay, I'll feel like a breath of fresh air. And I'll either hold the whole thing and write a comment that goes, change this to this, or I'll do it there and then depending and i'll carry on my read and then i just carry on when i get to when i get to the end i'm usually like okay i just carry on writing down with 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 this keyboard um i just carry on writing and it's always been fine for me and that method has worked for three novels um okay two novels the first novel i was kind of learning how i want to write and it yeah okay but like it's worked for me like it, it literally i've written and i've enjoyed and it's been pleasurable uh so when i started writing when i've been writing nancy and holmes my current detective novel when I got to the sticking point, I did the same thing again. I just couldn't work out what was wrong. It was causing me serious, serious anxiety. So I loaded up Dabble Writer. I started a trial of Dabble Writer. Um, and I started using their plot board. And it's great, but I'm not paying £20 a month for their bloody plot board. That's mad. It's, it's insane money, Dabble Writer. It's so expensive. Um, paying for Dabble Writer, it, which is a great service, but when I, you know, I feel like it's not really, like, while it's useful, it's not really worth the money. So I didn't want to get too far into it. And I've got a friend that talks a lot about using using um, Excel to outline their writing and make writing chunks and stuff. So I was like, this is the way to do it. So I made this thing. And again, this isn't revolutionary. This isn't a new idea, but it's kind of new to me. I made this board here, right? This is my plot board. This is, this is basically a way to document plot in a way that's visual in order for you to see where your problem is, which has really helped me this weekend and caused me turn my anxiety into a breath of fresh air actually now because i'm a discovery writer i don't want to plan ahead i kind of need to discover my book as i'm writing because that's how i get the natural dialogue i go for the tone and the pace that matches the excitement of the writing and all those things every time i try and plan just absolutely ruins it for me (laughs) because if i plan it it just i feel like it's falling to bits around me right um so I made this spreadsheet. So down the left here is the first column here is the chapter and scene. Now, most writers, whether or not they delineate their scenes, um, whether or not they actually make them visually delineated or not, they will in their head be writing in scenes. Now, I love I love an ornament in a book. I love a little ornament to break up a chapter. Some people just use a line break. Some people don't actually, they just write and they just say, you can just, you know the scenes change, but you don't really have the visual telegraph. But for me, I certainly enjoy the decoration so for me it's easy to break them up so there you go i shoot for three scenes per chapter sometimes it's four sometimes it's two depending on what's happening i don't believe writing systems should be adhered to 100 percent, and i certainly don't believe you should have you should go with like three every single time because it's going to be boring you need to break it up a little bit so people don't know what's coming right um so anyway this is chapter one scene one chapter one scene two chapter one scene three the title of the chapter now in the case of nancy and holmes the first chapter really is called being alone and the purpose of this chapter is to introduce Nancy, establish her life, her friends and challenges. And breaking that down to the three scenes there, I've got scene that's setting the tone. So scene and tone setting, yeah. So just like how, what, you know, what, what's, where are we? Why are we? What sort of, what sort of interactions are we going to have? Is it comedy? Is it horror? Is it grim? Is it joyful? Let's set that tone as soon as we can. And that's always done with a strong opening line. Um, so in this particular scene, we had Nancy... Uh, working in working in the bar she was working the bar okay that's what we have that's nancy at the top this this is nancy's column all nancy's actions happen in this column her friend marina holmes who is the detective character and then some other people that may come into it later and then in the next and then in that during that scene her friend marina uh notices she's 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 not great she notices she's not great 
uh, and then this character these characters aren't in it so these characters here can just be grayed out because we're not using them for this scene so we'll just gray them out like that they're done we're not using them and then the next scene here um we want to we want to establish we decided we're going to establish friendships so that's not how you spell friendship so friend ships <laughs> can establish friendships with people so now we're going to see that um nancy uh stops working uh and she she tells nancy to stop working because she's her boss now this is just the beats it's not supposed to be a something you couldn't read this and interpret the entire plot but as the writer that knows the plot i know that marina's nancy's boss because i've got a whole character outline and i also know that she's the one that told her to stop working so she she did as she stopped working right so and again the tone what we're trying to do is establish friendship and these are the actions we take in order to do that and again these characters still aren't in it they're just they're just not here they're just not here and they establish the town so we then we have leaves the bar with marina my friend marina and then marina here uh leaves the bar with nancy uh leaves bar with nancy Oh my gosh, look at that, I can't write. With Nancy uh, is doing so to help her. That's her motivation there. And then we may have this character observe them. So we may have, have this character observes them leaving. This is not what happens in my book, by the way. This is just, even though we've used the same names and stuff, this is not the actual plot. This is not, there's no spoilers here. This is just me shit talking for YouTube, to be honest. Um, so then we can, we can see then we're, we're screwing things away. Um, and then we're just going to go on to the next chapter, which might be called Bees. It's not, but it might be called Bees, right? And in this chapter, the purpose of this chapter is to show show the town more and Nancy's, Nancy's house uh, and her dog, uh, her god, <laughs> her dog, her dog, um, um, poo balls. Yeah, so then we might want to add a character for poo balls on this column or not, I don't know. And then we might, you know, we just start populating all the things we've got here and just start filling it up with stuff. Now, in the case of Nancy and Holmes, what I did was I documented every scene and every action as it happened and I started color coding. And this is the key I use for color coding over here. So if it's pink, if it's yellow, it's a clue. If it's pink, it's a plot note. If it needs tweaking, so I'm, I don't want to change it, but it needs tweaking, I might make it that weird orange color. If it's an inconsistency, I'll make it red. And then if it's something happens off camera, like a character knows something or something happens to a character, you want to keep track of that, just put it in square parentheses, just put it in square brackets, it's, it's fine. Just square brackets it off and it's fine. Um, so in this case, uh, so we might not know, we might not write that he sees them leaving, but he does. So I'll put that in square brackets there. So we know it's not written there that he sees them leaving, but later on we find out that he saw them leaving. That might be what we do with that. Or we might go, oh, this is a bit of a this is a bit of a bit of a bit of a plot hole there, so we'll make it red. And that just denotes that we're gonna do it. Or we might go, okay, so there's, there's, this is a clue for something that happens in the mystery. And we'll make it we'll make it oh this this is also a clue. And then you can see that the colour codes start working. In the case of Nancy and Holmes, when I zoomed out of here, when I started zooming out of here, I start and again I got seven chapters in. I was like, oh, all the clues are clustered. That's what's wrong with it. And I was like, oh, there's a main character that doesn't come into it for five chapters. That and then again I saw that because that particular character was greyed out uh, right the way down to here, where there was like, hi. For out of nowhere like they'd always been there and i was like oh that's not right that, that doesn't really work um that's the shit um and that allowed me to visually see it by zooming out i can go okay so i need to move my clues around pepper them around a bit more i need to not for this character needs to be mentioned up here even though they don't need to come into it we need to acknowledge their existence up here before we move on um and that allowed me to then look at the book and go, okay, this actually, now I understand how this is flowing. So as I've been carrying on writing, I've been documenting my character's actions in here to make sure I don't face that cluster again. If I look at it and go, oh shit, this, that's a problem, I can then just change it. And also I, I do I do, I do, do like to be really like careful about my, uh, about my borders because I find that when you zoom out especially, then borders start looking nicer and nicer and they can be more and more important. So, you know, I just like to keep my borders nice. And you might be wondering, what's this dump column here? Say, for instance, I want this to happen to this character over here. If I drop it there, it's just going to be like, no. It's all populated. I'll just move this to the dump column. I'll move this where I want it. And then I will move this back to the other column. And the dump column really is just there 
to just just there to, to be a place to dump crap until I move it. If I want another column, I can just I can just I can either you say if I want if I want this column moved, I can just I can just like cut this column, and I can just like paste it over paste it over here. So 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 just oh I didn't I don't have a cut there do I? So cut this one here, and then I went sort of paste it in there. Insert cut cells. And it'll just nudge it up. There you go. And that's just nudged up. Swap the order around. And if I want more, if I want an infinite number of characters, I can keep going. That dumb column can be moved around just the same as everything else. I can just keep going as many as many characters as you want forever. Also, if my book gets longer and longer, I can just keep going down, adding columns down here as well. This is infinitely scalable in every direction. But also part of the joy of this is if I look at this and I go, wow, look at this massive amount of columns. How many characters do I have? Visually, it's telegraphing that to me. Or if I go, wow, this is so long and there's so few characters doing anything, that's also something else it can visually telegraph using this method. I didn't, I don't think, I didn't, I don't think I've this method. Um, this is not, I made the template. I'm not sure, I'm, I'm sure other people are doing the same thing with their books though. Um, so I don't want to take any credit for anything, but this really helped me get over a sticking point. It really helped me understand the characters and it really helped me understand the flow of my own work and correct some pacing issues. Now, if you're someone who plots ahead of time, this is kind of useless to you because you just, you've got all in your plot and you're just following your beats down. And that's a great way of doing it if that's your style of writing. But if you're like me and you, if you're like me, you just, you just really need to discover your own characters. What this allows you to do is document instead of plot and it allows you to see problems as they occur. So if you, so as I write a chapter now, I write a chapter, I document the chapter, I write a chapter, document, and then if you go, oh, okay, screw it, I've, I've really not done well on this. I, I can see almost like visually what's wrong with it and that's really helped me writing. Whether I won't do this going forward. So like uh, when I finish this book and I go back to writing sci-fi, um, I don't feel like I need the support with sci-fi. I don't like. I feel like I'm, I'm I'm okay at writing that, and I feel like I can write that. I'm not sure I'll carry on doing this. But that said, when I get to the end of this, if I look at it and I find it really useful, I could easily incorporate this into my work. So much so that I keep this folder here. Actually, I keep, I keep this folder here um, of new books. This is my new book template. So every time I make a new book, I just copy and paste this folder, and it's got some pre-arranged files in there, and I've actually added that plot board. To want to there because I found it so useful so far. I just added the plot board ready to go in there, and that's you know. Uh, so I'm kind of intending to use it. Kind of intending to. Use it. I can delete that now. It's just the one I was just working. I can delete that. But with Nancy and Holmes, yeah, it's uh, it it it's it's kind of been great. So let me know if you're a writer. Let me know how you deal with these problems. Um, I'd really be interested to find out below how how you get through this. If you're not a writer and you're you're like someone who's learning to write. You're a writer. Stop letting people tell you otherwise. Someone who writes is a writer. That's the end of the conversation. Um, but if you're someone who's just getting into it and you're just getting into writing and it's something that's new to you, um, you might potentially, having knowing this, having these templates that are ready might be the way forward. And people are going to say to me, hey, can I download your template? No, you can't. I mean, you can't. You don't need to download my template. If loads of people ask, I'll throw it on my Tumblr page. But like, you, you can make this yourself because you shouldn't be using other people's tools. You should be making your own tools because that's the best way of writing. Thank you for watching. I've been HexDSL. If you would like to support me, you can buy my books on hexdsl.itch.io or search for them on Amazon or Kobo or click the link below the video. Um, if you really want to help me, you can send me stuff off my wish list at wishlist.hexdsl.com or, you know, support me on Patreon, help me buy a Mac. I love you all very much. Goodbye.